Welcome to our Miami Film Festival Gems Q&A for Black Bear. I'm joined by the film's writer and director, Lawrence Michael Levine. So um, Lawrence, uh, I've heard you mention this is a really uh, personal film for you. Can you tell me a little bit about what compelled you to make it and uh, where the story came from? Yeah, um, it's personal in the sense that it's, I guess these are all, I can answer the same question by following one train of thought, which is that um, I make my living as a screenwriter uh, and I do a lot of, I've worked on a lot of stuff that's more conventional and, um, you know, it just has a typical three act structure and uh, is sort of done by committee. You know, you're working with producers and, um, and networks and things like executives, things like that. And so the work is kind of, it's very workshopped and pre-planned and everything's worked out in advance, but this movie was much more intuitive and spontaneous. I didn't really um, have a plan. I kind of, I just kind of approached it more like an artist in front of a blank canvas and sort of characters started to come to me and uh, it was much more like a channeling type situation than, than saying, oh, I wanna make a comedy about X, Y, or Z and then sort of following a linear three act structure or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's more, I, I, the method of working on it was more like an actor or a musician, um, both of the things that I dabbled in, yeah. where you sort of cultivate a mood mm -hmm. and a feeling and then just start to create from a feeling rather than like an intellectual plan. So yeah, yeah. so in that sense, it was personal. It doesn't, there's nothing autobiographical in it. Mm -hmm. So um, I know you also wrote the script for Always Shine, which is a movie I'm a, a really big fan of. And I also see some oh, cool. similarities to this as it's a, a psychological thriller um, that also deals with like a, the theme of duality. Um, mm -hmm. What is it about that uh, theme and that genre that kind of keeps you um, coming back to it? Um, I don't, I don't know that I have an answer. I know that, um, I, I think, I, I don't think I have a great answer. Um, I guess I'm interested in the notion of identity and identity construction and, um, the connection between who we think we are and our behavior and, and things like that. Uh, I'm not quite sure I know. I, I do see a connection between the two films. Um, yeah. And there are identity switches in those films. Um, I'll say this, I do think that there's, um, in the process of creating writing, mm -hmm. um, I do feel like I take on different identities of the characters as I'm writing them. So it may have to do with that, that feeling that somehow filters into the work. Yeah. Well, so, so much of this film is about the creative process. Do you feel like you said, you said you went into this with a more spontaneous way. Do you feel like you kind of learned more about your own creative process through making this? Um, I feel like I deepened my creative process through making this. Um, I don't know if that counts as learning, uh, mm -hmm. but, but I feel like I definitely deepened it. I, I, I took a chance. I mean, I guess it was a calculated risk. Um, because I had saved up enough money from, you know, paying work to on uh, more conventional projects to sort of take six months and say, you know, I am going to try something really different. Um, and I kind of discovered that I could write something from a more spontaneous place as opposed to by the book. Yeah. So a lot of this film, especially uh, the first half, um, deals with uh, gender politics and uh, gender roles. Uh, you know, when you started writing the script, did you always know that was something you really wanted to like deeply infuse into it? No, as I said, I, I didn't know anything at all. <laughs> I really didn't. These things kind of presented themselves to me more than I, I said intellectually, like, you know, I want to write a movie about gender politics or something like that. Mm -hmm. that, that did not occur to me, but, um, but it did come out in the writing and, you know, I think in the notion, uh, I think that you see when, when you watch the film, or at least I do, because in some ways I'm interpreting it just like you are, because I guess it came out of me in some way, mm -hmm. but 
I didn't have it planned. So when I finished, um, for, for example, part one, you know, I had to look at myself and sort of, what was this about? <laughs> right. you know, and, and it was interesting to look at it through my own lens that way, um, which I wouldn't through other movies I've written, for example. But um, to answer your question, I think the movie is more about the use of language as a weapon mm -hmm. than it is about any particular belief. Um, yeah. I'm not sure where the, what those characters actually believe. And I think, especially in a time like now, it seems like people are very polarized, at least if you read the news or, or um, absorb social media or, or whatever. But um, I think in reality, people don't really know what they think or feel a lot of the time. And they may adapt a position at the moment for emotional reasons or um, territorial reasons or for financial reasons. Um, so it's, it's more about the weaponization of language, I think than any particular idea. Although, you know, since Donald Trump became president, for example, I've noticed a lot more political arguments, a lot more tension uh, about in things when people discuss politics. So I do think that that ambient atmosphere of political tension made it into the film in that way, because it seemed like a realistic depiction of yeah. the kinds of conversations people were having. Yeah, totally. And I mean, you really feel the tension so much in those scenes when they're talking about those topics and you can see one character kind of push back on it. And another thing that really, another thing that really uh, shines through is the idea of like relationships and specifically relationships between two creatives and the kind of, uh, you know, atmosphere um, when you have two very creative people in a relationship. I know uh, you're in a relationship with a, a director. Is that something when you watched it back, you were like, oh, wow, like, that's really something I did uh, kind of want to yeah. explore. Uh, well, yeah, um, we, we've never been through uh, any sort of terrible experience like <laughs> is depicted in the second part of the movie. Um, mostly our working together has been, I would describe it as an adventure. Uh, Sometimes it's very exciting and great. Other times it's really challenging and difficult. I mean, th this part two is a particular nightmare. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we've never lived through anything like that. Although there might be a moment or two that has something to do with that feeling on set, yeah. on different sets we've worked on. So I think, and I think the germ of the idea came from a time earlier, early in our relationship, the germ of part two. Mm -hmm. I think it came from a period in our relationship where uh, we were working through whether or not we were going to work together at all. And, um, and well, this is kind of personal, but, okay. <laughs> you uh, but, you know, I think that sh she felt that my writing things for her or putting her in movies was an expression of love. Whereas I thought if I, which, I, whereas I thought, well, I shouldn't, have to, every movie I do shouldn't have to be about you or have you in it. That shouldn't be the way that I express my love right. for you. Um, so I think um, I think that, and and I think she took that feeling as a sort of rejection. Mm -hmm. So I think somewhere in that energy. Um, but this is a long time ago. I mean, this is, yeah. you know, like 13 years ago or something. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe the germ of the idea came from that period, way back in the history of our- well, It's really interesting to see how ideas can come back from such small things that happened a long time ago that you may not even like think about yeah. uh, anymore. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a small thing. It was a big thing in our relationship yeah. at the time. Um, and this, in this movie, I view part two, um, I kind of view Chris's character as punishing uh, Aubrey's character for forcing him to put her in a movie. Right. For, 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 for kind of emotionally blackmailing him into doing it. And so he makes the experience very miserable for her. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I, I think- He makes it miserable for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, one of the things that makes this movie work so, so well is the casting. I mean, the three leads, I really just make the movie shine. Can you tell me a little bit about the casting process and how you got them on board? Um, the casting, since it was only three main characters, the casting process wasn't 
very elaborate. Um, I, I worked with Aubrey on a TV show called Easy. Mm -hmm. um, and we started to talk about doing something together. So I sent her, so I, I wrote this um, after that conversation or those conversations. I asked her to do it. She said yes. And then her um, agent was very helpful in getting the script to um, Chris and Sarah, who were my first choices for the other roles. So everybody that I wanted to be in the movie was. Um, and I was just really lucky that way. I think they're like three of the best actors working today. Of them. Yeah, they're incredible. Yeah, so, so do you have any um, plans for future projects? Any, anything else you're working on right now? Um, yeah, I, I do. Um, I do, I have a few things, uh, but, but nothing I'm really ready to talk about, but yeah. Cool. No, nothing like imminent. I mean, there's this, this pandemic going on. Right, so. it's, that's a hard time to be making stuff right now. Production well, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us for this Q&A. Um, I'm so excited for people to see the film. I know they're gonna love it. Oh, thanks a lot, Lauren.